So, nice little turnaround here we have here, huh? Um, kind of unexpected, I'd, I'd definitely say that. But, um, honestly though, before we get really just, you know, three knuckles deep into this one, let's just give a, like, little, uh, synapsis. Is that a word? It pro it's a word, but... Hang on, I'm gonna Google it real fast. Synapsis. Here's the definition of synapsis. The fusion of chromosome pairs at the start of meiosis. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck am I thought I was thinking of. I, sure. Anyways, so yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I th what was I talking about? Oh yeah, this is about if you just, you know, a little introduction of... Should you have mommy buy you the fucking game or not? And uh, I'd say, sure, ask mommy to buy you this game. I've been having some fucking fun with the game, honestly. But uh, definitely problems. Well, like I said, we're going to get like we might get even four knuckles deep into the problems and all of that. But uh, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> a fun experience, though, honestly. Uh, it's the most fun I've had with Call of Duty in literal years and years and years and years and years. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, let's be just real about it. It's just a better experience than 2019 overall. And uh, we can get into this uh, a bit later. Alright, so let's first dive into the pros because... Let's let's start positive, okay? We don't want to fucking rape its ass on what's wrong with it at first, but yeah, pros. Let's start with the overall gameplay. You know, it's the fun arcadey shooter you always known, and if not, just improved upon. You know, guns sound good, guns feel good, and to my surprise, there's nothing that other than you know, traditional SMG sweat fest, but overall most guns i've used so far uh snipers and lmgs trying to get the challenges done but overall guys this is surprisingly a well-balanced call of duty for the most part like um like i said obviously smgs are just so dominant and always have been ars still pretty good and all that but if you want to win and have the most best advantage you're best off running around with the mp5 again that's how it always is in Call of Duty, but you're very capable in this game with sniping even naked rifles. Like, that was the big thing about 2019 of how nerfing of the sniper, you know, just how bad they were at the start. And they even maxed out, they were just like not that good. But this game, like naked snipers aren't horrible, still obviously not like good. But then even when you max them out, they actually feel really good. And then you have your marksman rifles. Still, just an overall, most of the, for the most part, well-balanced gunplay. Another uh, positive is the audio. Um, in terms of just overall, like, design-wise, I love the sound of most guns, like all guns or whatever, you know. The sounds, like I said, of the beta, of the reloads, everything just sounds realistic and like real magazines and shit. I don't know, like other than actually just recording them doing that, it sounds just really nice. Uh, but yeah. Now, um, I guess we'll do graphics. I mean, to me, honestly, <laughs> I fucking booted up 2042 yesterday. And, oh my God, it just, to me, I don't know what it is. I think it's just the overall engine of 2042. It just looks just better. It's so weird. Like, I think technically... Like, the texturing in this game is probably better. Like, at least on your character model and the gun models, maybe. I don't know. But, like, the environments are very... Like, this shoot house looks good now. It doesn't look all flat. But still, I don't know. There's just something about the Modern Warfare engine that it just... It looks fine, but it is not no next-gen showcase, even on PS5, where I feel like 2042... I don't know. Point being, graphics, they, they're passable. I honestly am not expecting, you know, amazing graphics from Call of Duty. It's just how it's always been. Um, other positives. Uh, overall, just gameplay. Um, it, like I, you know, the whole point is it's actually fun to play the game. It's not, even with skill-based matchmaking, I'm enjoying my time. And, like, my big gripe of skill-based matchmaking, uh, skill-based matchmaking has always been, 
more of the connection to servers rather than playing against sweats. Like, yeah, it's annoying to have everyone be a fucking god you go against, but to me it has always been, because I don't have the best internet on the planet, and having the sweaty boys have their good internet, at least probably better than mine, just because, oh, you're in a higher skill bracket, so you have to look for better ser- or, well, worse servers, but, you know, better in terms of your skill level. But overall, it's been a decent experience to see. I'm like, you know, low 50s, pretty much 40s. I've gotten the 60s and 70s, but overall, not too bad of, you know, just overall multiplayer experience. Uh, I mean, the other things of just level design, that's where we're going to probably just focus on the negatives and stuff for the most part. The other maps I do like, like Farm 18 or 13, whatever it is, and uh, there's that one I like, and then there's the one... De Poros de Cascuela. I don't know that one's name, but even though, but I've grown to actually not like that map anymore, but at the beginning of like the grind and playing, I kind of like that map, but yeah, uh, if I remember any fucking other positives, we'll obviously cut them in, but let's now get to the fun part. All right, negatives. Um, so far, honestly, the negatives haven't been too annoying. Uh... You know, server issues obviously here and there. At least it's playable, and the overall foundation was solid when it came out, unlike other games. Um, the map design is e easily the biggest negative for me. Uh, all these maps are just pretty meh. The best ones are would be, at best, the middle of the pack in, you know, the prime days of Call of Duty. But overall, they're fine enough. I rather... I'm, I'm just living in Shoot House now because it's the best for challenges and it's the most fun playing map that is available. Same is going to happen when Shipment uh, drops. But yeah, these maps, they're all, you know, I have very little faith in them to make good maps nowadays. Just from, I mean, Cold War had decent maps from what I remember. I don't even know if they did. Either way, just the maps, they're just not good. They're pretty just meh and it's whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so this is neither, neither a positive or a negative, but just something I wanted to reference or just talk about. So, Gunsmith. It's been the most overhyped mechanic or feature in Call of Duty since 2019, and it continues to be that way with actually a slight positive addition. So, I guess overall it is actually a positive rather than negative, but overall just still, to me, just underwhelming and just only a tool to enhance the grind for people so just let me explain myself uh there's a million different sites for no reason there are so many attachments for all these different guns and it's just pointless because you always build for aim down sight speed because that's how the game is designed they design these weapons to be slower so then you have to build to make them faster and that's what you're always going to build for Recoil in this game is pretty much non-existent, especially on controller. I don't know about uh, keyboard and mouse, but usually even then it's even easier. But who knows? I don't play on PC. But so the negative with recoil is, like I said, it's meaningless. So you're always going to go for aim down sight speed and more damage. And then, you know, if you have to sacrifice one or the other, you're always going to go for aim down sight speed just so you have that advantage of shooting first. It's the same uh, old thing from 2019, just overrated in terms of, oh, you can do all these builds. Like, no, you can't. It's a fake uh, thing. Like, yeah, you can, but in terms of actual effectiveness, no. That's not like you can do, oh, let's do this kind of build, and it's as effective, maybe a little bit less, but, you know, comparable, no. You're at such a disadvantage. There's no point in experimenting, and that's the biggest disappointment of the gunsmith system is as much as you would think it would enhance b making gun builds in all actuality it just everyone makes the same thing and that's why the youtube algorithm is flooded with best gun build and everyone does the same so obviously you get your outliers of like well guys this attachment is bugged but overall in my experience it's fucking pointless everyone is just gonna go with aim down sight speed now the positive of the side is the tuning so to make it a little bit better but 
All it does is just make the stats better than what it would be normally, but still I'll take it because it makes it just more, you know, just better, <laughs> obviously, but uh, yeah, that's about it with uh, the tuning, <laughs> not, not so much there, here and there, but whatever. Now another positive while I was talking about that, I remembered about leveling up the guns and the grinding is I like how even though there are a shit ton of uh, attachments, there is a positive with they carry over per weapon type. So all the lasers, I think actually even ones that are universal, like lasers I'm pretty sure are just universal. So if you unlock lasers for certain weapons, it goes for every weapon once you unlock that category. Huge bonus there, and it makes the grind less annoying. You know, you still have to unlock those uh, categories for the gun, but you don't have to unlock each individual attachment for every single gun, and it's definitely a huge bonus there. Definitely mad props for that one. Now, the overall, um, like, getting new weapon experiences and stuff like that, you know, where you have to get other weapons at certain levels to get unlock the next weapon. At first, I thought that was whack, because it just makes people have to do shit they don't want to do. Then it made me realize, oh, I can get a gun early rather than have to grind a 45 to get the gun. And then I did it again where I'm like, no, it's annoying because now I have to go and do this whole other weapon category just so I can get this DMR or the marksman rifle on, like, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just stupid to me. Just, I mean, it's not stupid. There is like a, it's just not perfect. I honestly think it would have been better to. I don't know how you would make it just just a best like the best case scenario with that system because there, there is a positive with it but with the negative drawback of I think you're best off just doing it within the same family of weapon types like you know marksman rifles the DMRs where or, instead of like oh yeah you have to use this uh LMG to unlock this uh or uh, what's the one I don't remember I think it's like you have to use a pistol to unlock this SMG I don't know point being like just keep it on a I don't know same category I guess overall though I kind of like it honestly not gonna lie it just uh, I don't know it's it's just a different you know experience and I think that's why it's fun just because especially I think the main reason if you're going for the camel grind it if anything it just aids you because it's just you're gonna you're gonna get a head start on that next weapon then because you had to use it <clears throat> but I think to a casual that just you know man I'm just trying to run and gun with my AK and drop some motherfuckers then you're like yeah bro I don't want to fucking have to use this fucking pistol so I can unlock this grip or you know that kind of thing yeah I understand that but <clears throat> so and all it is obviously dependent on your what you want to get out of the game if you're gonna grind the camo it might not be that big of a deal if you're just a chill guy yeah it's a a no-go. Now, a final little negative that has been slightly annoying, and it hasn't occurred enough to be, like, drastic, but still enough to where I've noticed it, and it's become a nuisance, is the servers themselves are just ass, and are just like, what the fuck kind of shit is that? Uh, and more just, it's better just, you know, a video worth a million words. Yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, I don't know, people are just, maybe it's just part of, like, new force field technology in the game, but I'm just not hip to, I don't know. But, no, uh, it's, uh, yeah, a little frustrating when shit like that happens. It happened, like, probably three more times within the 24, whatever, I have a decent amount of time in this game. 24 hours, I'm, like, a day in, I don't know. Yeah. Either way, overall, though... I definitely, if you are just a Call of Duty fan and you haven't bought the game, or you're just a multiplayer fan, you know, shooter fan, and you're just tired of the same old drip-fed dog shit launches that we keep getting, this is surprisingly one that's pretty decent, especially in these times. Uh, yeah, I mean, for a multiplayer game, I guess overall, if we want to do an overall rating, 
I'm only talking about the multiplayer, obviously, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I'd say, like, an 8 out of 10, like, honestly, like, uh, it's not that bad, it's, especially in 2022, it's actually pri uh, pretty mind-blowing, uh, well, <laughs> the overall, like, state of the game and overall experience or whatever you want to call it, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I honestly recommend playing the multiplayer and getting the game. It's kind of fucking wild to say. In 2022, I recommend getting Call of Duty. Interesting times. But to piss people off some more, I think 2042 is better.